right, let's, uh, let's go back to Proverbs. Uh, let's begin there in Proverbs chapter, uh, let's go to Proverbs chapter 13. Just going to lay some groundwork here. And uh, yeah, Brother Cecil, the problem is it's not a classic yet. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> all right, Proverbs chapter 13 and uh, verse number 13. Wait a minute here. I beg your pardon. Uh, Psalm chapter 24 and verse number 1. You know. So we should be in Psalm chapter 24 and verse number 1. It's probably one of the greatest verses in the Bible. <clears throat> the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Would you just stop and think about that? Um, God is the owner. God is the owner of the earth and the fullness thereof and the people that dwell therein. Uh, it's just that some realize that and most do not. Okay? And so... Now, uh, let's, let's go over to uh, the Gospel of uh, Mark, chapter 8. And so, so God owns it all. <clears throat> it all belongs to God the people as well, and it's all his. Um, some people, some people understand that, most people do not. All right, so the Gospel of Mark chapter number 8, and uh, <clears throat> we'll pick it up at verse number 34. And, uh, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also. He said unto them, uh, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's, the same shall save it. And of course, this timeless, great question. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Um, let's look at a man who gained the whole world but lost his soul. The Gospel of Luke. A man that gained the whole world and lost his own soul. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 16. Hmm. 
The Gospel of Luke chapter 16, and we'll drop down to uh, verse number 19, and I'll read through verse uh, number um, 25. So Luke chapter uh, 16 and verse number 19. <clears throat> so here's a man who gained the whole world, but he lost his own soul. And uh, <clears throat> there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously, <clears throat> means he lived in luxury every day. <laughs> every day he uh, experienced life uh, in luxurious living. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried and in hell. He lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Literal burning hell. <clears throat> and mind you, and mind you, he's in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. <clears throat> A man who gained the world, but he lost his own soul. <clears throat> and we have no indication that he ever gave any of his uh, crumbs to Lazarus. Lazarus desired the crumbs, but there's nothing here to suggest that Lazarus was ever given those crumbs. What we do know is that Lazarus died. One can only <clears throat> uh, uh, died of starvation at the rich man's gate. Well, perhaps Second Peter chapter three. So let's go there. Second Peter. Yeah, I'm, Thinking everything that meant so much to the rich man here on earth somehow no longer meant anything to him there in hell. <clears throat> Second Peter chapter 3. And let's uh, drop down to verse number 9. I'm going to read on through verse... <clears throat> the first part of uh, verse number 15, uh, but uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 and, uh, and uh, verse number 9. Uh, now the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. And that answers the question, why 
doesn't Jesus come now? Well, he's, um, he's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, uh, like the rich man who died and went to hell, but that all should come to repentance. God is waiting for all people to come into agreement with him that they have sinned against him, they've broken his commandments, they're guilty as charged, deserving of death in hell, but that they would come to repentance, they would admit to God they've sinned against him, and turn to Jesus Christ for the salvation of their soul. That is what God is waiting for. And to the church, God says, go and preach the gospel to every creature. And so we go. Hopefully we're going <clears throat> and getting the gospel out there. But he continues in verse 10, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works <clears throat> that are therein, well, what happens to all of the things uh, on earth? God burns them up. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, wow. Um, God burns them up. You know, verse 12, or pardon me, 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, you know, seeing that God's going to burn them all up. So, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation? Um, you know, what God is asking is, what are you living for? What are you spending your life for? In light of the fact that God's going to burn it all up, What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation is life, lifestyle, your purpose of life, <clears throat> and godliness. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. And we should be looking for the coming of uh, our Lord. Wherein the heavens uh, being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. And that comes back to holiness. Um, verse 15. And account that the long suffering of our God, of our Lord, is salvation. I'm so thankful that God waited for me to be saved and uh, waited for you to be saved. Um, so we have a man who, um, who saved his life. 
and yet he lost his life. And still today in the burning hell. Wow. Now let's uh, let's go to Second Corinthians uh, chapter nine. Second Corinthians chapter nine. Um, We'll begin at verse number six uh, to the church. Um, God has this to say, but this I say, uh, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And... He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, now look at what God is able to do. Um, In the lives of those who do give. um, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, talking to the church, Always having all sufficiency in all things. Let me read that again. To the church and uh, to those uh, in the church that are cheerfully giving. For God loveth a cheerful giver. For God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. He hath given to the poor. Well, now what's going on here with that? And uh, true to context, what is this about this giving to the poor? Well, look at Romans chapter 15 and verse 26. This this gift uh, that is mentioned in Corinthians uh, to the poor, Romans chapter 15, verse 26, For it hath pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution to the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. Um, so this gift that Paul is referencing is to the poor saints in Jerusalem. And there have been offerings from a number of churches uh, that are to minister to the poor saints in Jerusalem. Notice in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, there's some precise instruction given about that offering. Um, 
in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection for the saints, again, the poor saints in Jerusalem, as I have given order to the churches, so it's uh, multiple churches involved of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. That the offering is prepared, it's ready, it's made up, ready to go. So, um, <clears throat> and then, uh, please see with me God's promise to those who give to the poor. Now, these are, these are believers who, in Jerusalem, um, have come under great persecution, suffered great loss uh, at the hands of Rome. But, but look at this promise to those who give, uh, and specifically give to, as these churches are, to the poor saints in uh, Psalm 41. And so see that with me, Psalm chapter number 41. <clears throat> Psalm 41 and verse number 1, God makes this promise to those. And by the way, as we think about poor, as we think about poor people, uh, I don't know anybody who's... Uh, more impoverished than a person who has everything of this world but does not have Jesus. That is a poor person. <laughs> because having everything of the world will not get you into heaven and will not save you from hell. So I can't think of a more impoverished or poverty-stricken person than somebody who has everything uh, of the world uh, but does not have Jesus. That is the ultimate poor. Look at this. Uh, Psalm 41, verse 1. Blessed is he that considereth the who? The poor. So, be it a poor saint in another church that has been impoverished because of persecution, or be it someone on the other side of the world or someone on the other side of the street that has all of this world's goods but does not have Jesus. Poor is poor. And blessed is he that considereth the poor the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. And that goes back to the law of sowing and reaping. <clears throat> what a man sows, that shall he also reap. Verse 2, the Lord will preserve him and do what? Would you look at what the Lord will do for the... For the person that will consider the poor, God says, I'll keep you alive. In your time of trouble, when your time of trouble comes, God says, um, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. <clears throat> and he shall be blessed upon the earth. God says, I'll bless your life until I take you home. And thou wilt not deliver him under the will of his enemies. God says, I will protect you. I will bless you. I will protect you. Goes on to say <clears throat> in verse number three, as the promise continues, the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing 
Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. God says, I'll take care of you even through sickness. Wow. So we'll go back to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. <clears throat> so, you know, being true to the text, this particular offering is an offering that is being uh, given by the churches to the poor saints in Jerusalem who are, are losing so much uh, because of persecution. And uh, but so, uh, but, you know, giving to poor saints or giving uh, to the poorest of uh, people, a person who does not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Now that's, that's the deepest poverty that there is, uh, is to be without Christ. <clears throat> and uh, verse number 10 of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Now, he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So what God says to the church in verse number 10 is that he's going to continue to increase um, the fruits of your righteousness. God's going to give you more and more, um, in verse 11, being enriched in everything to all. And, and so verse 10 says God's going to continue to give you an increase. And then verse 11 explains why he's going to continue to increase your stewardship. It is for the express purpose of bountifulness. What, is, what does that mean, bountifulness? Well, that goes back to verse number 6. Remember, the word is mentioned in verse number 6. Let's go back to verse number 6. Uh, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly uh, gives, um, sparingly means uh, little, very little, very little, shall reap also very little. A man uh, reaps what he sows. You give little, then you will reap little. Uh, but And he which soweth, and there's the word, same word that appears in verse 11. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully, God's word says. So, um, so here's what God's going to do. He's going to increase in the life of those that, who will give cheerfully, because God loveth a cheerful giver, not grudgingly, uh, or um, what does he say, or of necessity, Um, God's going to continue to increase that you may continue to give bountifully. Um, and verse 11 then explains um, the greatest outcome of this kind of giving, cheerful giving, the greatest outcome is what it causes and what does it cause to the recipients of the gift of this bountiful giving. Verse 11, last statement of verse 11, to those who are the recipients of this bountiful giving, it causes them to do what? They thank God. They thank God. They praise and thank God. Um, and so that is the that is the objective in giving is to effect in the lives of the poor thanks giving to God. And you know, say, the day I was saved, I couldn't stop thanking him. 
in these 45 years later, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think a day goes by that I don't thank my God, my Savior, uh, for <laughs> delivering me from death in hell uh, and for all of his blessings upon my life. Um, <clears throat> 4 verse 12 continues the administration of this service not only not only supplieth the want of the saints the poor saints see we're, this goes back to the poor saints in Jerusalem that are suffering so much they've lost they're just losing everything um there in Jerusalem, uh, and uh, finally, they, they leave Jerusalem, and they go everywhere preaching the Word of God. Um, it's, it's the great diaspora, it's the great dispersion of the saints who, uh, they, they, they have to leave. Uh, in fact, the only ones that stay in Jerusalem are the, uh, are the apostles, they're they're the only ones that stay. They're, the rest of the church goes everywhere preaching the word of God. <clears throat> um, that, is how, uh, that is how real and how severe the persecution uh, becomes uh, to that church. Um, and, uh, but uh, for the administration of this service, uh, not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God, whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ, because you did what God was compelling you to do, what he was leading you to do, you, you gave in the way that God wanted you to give, and you gave bountifully, and you gave cheerfully, and uh, your, for your liberal, liberal uh, distribution unto them and unto all men. Um, and by their prayer for you, so beyond the fact that the recipient of the gift is now thanking God, the second Spiritual activity uh, is they are now praying for the giver. What are they praying? They're asking God to bless the giver. Bless uh, that church that gave uh, to eliminate my spiritual poverty um, and they're praying, asking God to bless the giver, which long after you, for the exceeding grace of God in you, uh, and then of course, uh, the standard of all giving, verse 15, the standard by which all giving is measured. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you would go back to Proverbs 11, please. Uh, let's see if we can find what we're looking for in Proverbs chapter 11. <clears throat> So uh, that passage that we just looked at answers the concern. Well, if I give, I mean, if I give, I'm, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, diminish my supply. I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, compromise myself. I'm going to jeopardize myself. If I, if I give, then it, it means there'll be less. You no, know, God says if you'll give and give cheerfully, and of course, bountifully, God says, I will increase 
in your life so that you'll always have sufficiency in all things. God says, this is what I'll do for you, uh, the steward that gives cheerfully and bountifully. God says, you'll never run out. You'll only increase. Wow. Now look at this. In Proverbs 11 and uh, verse number 24, all right, yeah, Proverbs 11 and uh, verse number 24. There is that scattereth, which means to give, to give away. There is <clears throat> um, that scattereth and yet, what? So how does that work? Scatter means you let go of. Because if you're going to scatter something, you have to release it. See, and in the, in the, in the human mind says, well, if I, if I let go, if I let go, there's going to be less for me. But what does God say? God says, there is that scattereth and yet increaseth. And that's what God said to the church. If you'll give um, now, if you'll give um, cheerfully, and uh, and you'll you'll give uh, as led by the Spirit of God to live to give, led by God. This all has to be led by God. I mean, this is not an act of the flesh. It's not something you know. None of this is done up without going to God in prayer. Now, why would I go to God in prayer about giving? Why would I go to God and, and say, God, what do you want me to give? Why, why would I do that? Remember the first verse we looked at? Proverbs, was it uh, Psalm 24, verse 1? Who does it all belong to? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. I mean, it's all God's. It all belongs to him. Um, so stay with me here just a moment longer. We're going to make it. <clears throat> um, and he that watereth, he that watereth shall be watered also himself. You see the, you see the, uh, the truths that surround giving? Uh, now look at this <clears throat> in verse 26. He that, uh, do I have that? No, verse 25. Uh, verse 25. The liberal soul shall be made what? And, and that, that means abundance. Abundance. Okay. He that, he that watereth shall be watered also himself. So, um, you know, Let's, let's go over quickly. We're going to wrap it up. Matthew chapter number 6. So, you know, uh, it's really, it comes down to a decision. Who do I believe? Do I, do I believe uh, God or <clears throat> Do I believe me? You know, it all comes down to a decision. Who am I going to believe, God or me? <laughs> um, Matthew uh, chapter 6, and uh, so we'll look at verse 19, and I'm just going to read through verse number 21. Here Jesus uh, says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Okay. Um,
Let's go to Luke chapter 16. And with this, we'll have to close. Luke chapter 16. And this is the passage I was referring to at the start of the message. Luke chapter <clears throat> number 16. So, by the way, you know, the church has several missionaries that have uh, reached out to the church. They have, uh, we've met, uh, uh, I, I want to say Brother Lock, Brother Lock, mm, Lockhard, yeah, Brother Lockhard. And uh, other missionaries have been reaching out to the church because they want to give their lives. They want to go to uh, these uh, places uh, in the world that, uh, uh, that desperately need to hear the saving message of Jesus Christ. And they're looking for partners that will partner in prayer, that will partner by giving, that will help them then to be able to subsist uh, you know, wherever God is calling them to in the world and to uh, be able to stick and stay and make it pay on those uh, fields, um, those harvest fields. Now, um, so we're in Luke chapter 16, and uh, I'll, I'll begin at verse number one. And he said also unto his disciples, again, Jesus, our teacher, there was a certain rich man which had a steward. You know, and uh, I would say God is beyond rich. He owns it all. But we most assuredly are his steward. It, you know, every child of God is, uh, holds God's property. Um, and whatever, whatever uh, measure of God's property you hold, that's determined by God. And uh, the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. Do you, do you think God would consider it wasteful if I vested all of his resource into that which he ultimately was just going to burn up? Or should I invest some of his resource into the eternal, um, such as reaching lost souls for the kingdom of God? Uh, obviously, we, 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 we all uh, live in this world. We have to function in, in this world. We, we have to subsist in this world. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, uh, God will let us know. He'll let us know what of his resources he wants us to purpose uh, by cheerful giving uh, and, and to be dedicated to reaching um, uh, lost souls for his kingdom. And that's, that's why we ask him. So, um, uh, for thou mayest no longer be steward. So, verse number three, then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my Lord hath taken, uh, taketh away from me the stewardship. Uh, I, I cannot dig to beg. I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do. <clears throat> Uh, when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Okay. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, How much owest thou, my Lord? And he said, Well, an hundred measures of oil, you know, and the steward said unto him, Take the, thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then said he to another, How much owest thou? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And the steward said unto him, Take thy bill and write four score or eighty. And uh, <clears throat> verse eight. So the way it worked 2,000 years ago, uh, the rich man would tell the steward, this is how much I want. And then I would say to the steward, and any amount you can tack on, you get to keep. And so what the steward is doing, and that's the way it worked 2,000 years ago, um, that's um, one of the benefits of the stewardship is whatever he could tack on to the uh, amount owed his master, he got to keep that. 
And so what the steward is doing is he's, he's giving up what could have been his to help them. He's giving away what he could have kept for himself to help those in debt. Now, watch this. Um, <clears throat> verse 8, And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. Well, what had he done? He gave. He gave away what he could have kept for himself. He gave it away to help them, the debtors. Now watch, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness that when ye fail, does anybody know what that means? What does that mean, when ye fail? When you die. It's another way of saying, when you die, when your life here is over, they, now watch this, they may receive you where? Are you getting this? Jesus is saying, by this lesson, you were wise because you gave away what you could have kept for yourself to make the greatest way you can make friends is to reach somebody for Christ. If you share Jesus, the gospel, and that person gets saved, not only have you made a friend for the rest of time on earth, you've made a friend who will receive you into everlasting habitations. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Uh, these everlasting habitations are those eternal dwelling places that Jesus is preparing right now for all who will believe in him, all who will accept him as personal Savior. So, um, it's, it's wise stewardship. Do, do I just keep it all for myself? Do I just amass all of this stuff that God says I'm going to burn up, or, and, and by the way, is God asking me to give it all away? No. Huh. No, he's not. But that's why we go to God and we say, you know, Lord, I understand that it all belongs to you. I understand this is what you've entrusted to my stewardship. What of this would you have me to give that others may know you? That others may hear about you? That others may go to somewhere in the world, wherever you've called them, to preach about you? What, what do you want me to give? And then you listen, and you pray some more, and you listen. And God, true to his word, will promise to guide you, lead you, direct you. And then it's that step of faith, it's that step of faith, and it was a real step of faith for this steward <laughs> to do what he did. Um, but he took that step of faith, and because he did, he'll have... Uh, He'll have invites to mansions in heaven from those who came to Christ because he gave, and he did give. And Jesus says he was wise to do that. So, and, uh, and so, 
Uh, it's time to start praying, uh, beloved. It's time to start praying. It's time to start going to God and just saying, Lord, <laughs> of everything that I have that belongs to you, what do you want me to do with it? Now, God understands. Uh, God understands, Brother Cecil, you're going to have head gaskets blow out. And what is, what's the other one? Water pumps blow out. God understands that. Amen. God understands that. He knows all about that. Uh, so, and, and to those who give cheerfully and give bountifully, uh, God says, I will, I will give you all sufficiency in all things and so that you'll have everything you need to do whatever it is I will for you to do. God makes that promise. God says to the church, uh, I will continue to increase in your life so that from that increase you can give more and more and those who benefit from your giving will thank me and they will pray for you. And because they're praying for you, that will invite greater blessings of God upon your life. It's just this marvelous plan of God. It's called stewardship. And it's, uh, it's all there as we seek God's guidance. And, um, and it's time to start, uh, start praying um, and start asking God as stewards. And, uh, Lord, uh, what do you want me to do as we fast approach uh, missions, Lord? Uh, Father, Lord, um, it's, it's just so incredible to me that we're already touching on this, but but we must, because uh, it, it just seems like uh, the, the days are just racing by, and, uh, and we'll soon uh, be having missionaries here. Uh, they've, they've, uh, they are planning to be here. They're planning to come and uh, share with us what you've called them uh, to do with their lives, and... Uh, and so we're excited about that. We're looking forward to that, Lord, and uh, we're thankful for that. And uh, we, we know that um, none of this is by sight, which, which is our natural tendency. It's, none of it's by sight. It's all by faith. And so I, I guess the question for the evening is, do, do I really believe the Word of God? Do I believe the promises of God's Word or do I believe my natural, uh, you know, my uh, just uh, those feelings within me, uh, especially at whenever we uh, broach the whole subject of giving? Um, you promise to increase, but but my natural self says if I scatter, <laughs> if I scatter, if I if I let go of, if I let loose of, I'll have less. And yet, God, you say I'll increase. And so really, it, it all comes down to who do I believe? Do I believe my God? Do I believe his word? Or do I believe those natural impulses within self, born of the old nature, the sin nature, that, that all tell me to cling to, to, uh, to keep a tight grip on or... Do I believe a God who says, if you'll give cheerfully and bountifully, and um, you'll always have sufficiency in all things, um, and a God who promises, I will increase you, that you might have even more to give. Wow. It's all so amazing, uh, but you're an amazing God, and everything you do is amazing. So, Lord, I, I just pray you'll find us seeking uh, before we ever get to uh, this special mis missions emphasis time in, in the church. I hope you'll find us already, um, you know, talking to you about stewardship and, and just, you know, 
Lord, what, what, what do you want me to do? And then just listening. And then, and I hope you'll find us uh, also willing to uh, take a step of faith, God. Uh, and uh, especially pray right now for anyone anywhere who is the poorest of the poor, a person who has everything in the world but does not have Jesus. I pray for that person right now, wherever in this world they are. They've got everything that money can buy. They just don't have the one thing that money can't buy. And that is the one thing that may only be had by repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. They just don't have Jesus. That is the deepest poverty known to mankind is to follow in the steps of the rich man who died and in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torments. The rich man who had everything that money can buy he just didn't have heaven. God, I pray for that person. I pray that Father in heaven, I pray you'll draw them to Jesus. Jesus who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. He's the only way. And there is no other way. I pray you draw that lost soul that unsaved soul, that hell-bound soul, that impoverished soul. I pray you draw them to Jesus. I pray you do it now. The way you drew me to Christ decades ago, that they too may be saved and uh, become rich um, in a way that only you can enrich. Father, bless your word, we pray, and help us. Help, help this church, Lord. Please lead us and guide us. Let us hear from you as we fast approach. Uh, what do you want us to do in missions this year? In Jesus' name.